In this video, we are going to discuss several aspects of the Marine EPA 110, such as installation, settings, and adjustments. Before removing from the box, be sure to confirm with the technical specification that the ECO 110 is the correct unit for you. Now, let's remove the contents of the box. We should have the packet with the manual, mounting hardware, and some spare gaskets. The one with the screen is for the water inlet. There will also be the mounting template, and lastly the heater itself. Now let's go ahead and mount the unit. Use a template to plot the three holes for the mounting screws on the wall. Mount vertically on a flat surface, i.e. a board or wall larger than the unit itself. Make sure the heater is secured by utilizing a stud or the provided wall anchors. And please keep away from any potential splashing or leaking water and strong magnetic fields. Before moving further, let's remove the front cover. Locate the retaining screw at the bottom of the unit located under the cold water inlet indicator. Once the screw is removed, you will be able to pull the cover away. Be careful not to pull too far or you may cause damage to the ribbon cable. Rest the cover on the corner of the back panel and remove the ribbon cable at the clip. Be sure to pull on the clip and not the wires to prevent damage and set the whole front cover aside. Before moving on to the plumbing, let's take a moment to look at our inlet fitting. As we are constantly improving our units, a few options may be in the market. The first fitting shown has no factory installed inlet screen. Please use the provided gasket with screen. The second two fittings have a factory installed pre-screen. One is recessed about a third of an inch inside the fitting, and the other fitting has a flush pre-screen. With these two fittings with the factory installed pre-screen, it is unnecessary to use the supplied gasket with the screen. We are now ready to make our plumbing connections. We use one half inch NPT for both the inlet and the outlet fittings, which can be found on the bottom of the unit. The cold water inlet is on the right hand side and it should be preceded by a high pressure discharge valve and a shutoff valve in that order. The hot water outlet is on the left side and runs to your hot water source. Never use PVC on the hot water outlet. Use instead CPVC or other heat rated materials. Use caution when tightening your fittings and make sure not to tighten them so much that it twists the fitting inside and causes damage to the sensors and wires. Run water through the heater for a few minutes to purge all air from the system and then shut the flow at the faucet to pressurize your system. At this point, check for and fix any leaks. If no leaks are present, then please move on to the next step. Before moving on to the wiring, be sure to free the wire retainer to ease the installation. The power for this unit needs to be supplied by a 60 amp double pole breaker. Your power wires and ground will come into the unit from the upper right hand side of the back panel. The factory recommendation is 6 gauge wire for supplying power from the 60 amp breaker and for the ground wire. Run that ground wire from the opposite spot of the terminal block from the green and yellow wire. It may be labeled as E. Run that all the way to the ground bar of the breaker panel. Then. Run one 6 gauge wire from each of the L1 and L2 connection points of the terminal block to the double pole 60 amp breaker at your panel. Please be sure that all connections at the terminal block are secure as well as the breaker panel and make sure to reinstall the wire retainer before putting back on the front cover. At this time, please put the front cover back on. When reinstalling the ribbon cable, make note of the notches in the clip. It can only fit properly one way.
Remember to reinstall the retaining screw at the bottom of the unit. Now you are ready to supply power to your heater. After power is supplied, a beep can be heard. If you need to change the display from Celsius to Fahrenheit, then make sure the unit is in the off mode by pushing the power button, then push the up arrow to cycle between the two options. When you turn on the hot water faucet, the heater will activate upon water flow. The display should show the actual outlet temperature. Push the power button if the unit does not change due to water flow. Set the desired temperature with the up and down arrows and test the water to prevent scalds. Part 2 Settings and Adjustments In this shot, you can see we have added an additional testing unit. It will show us our incoming water flow in gallons per minute, our incoming water pressure in PSI, and our incoming water temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. In this part of the video, we will show you how flow and pressure can have an effect on the outgoing water temperature of the heater. In the first test, we have a 2.5 gallons per minute flow rate at 50 psi with an incoming water temperature of around 68 degrees. With these input parameters, you can see that our outgoing water temperature is 98 degrees, or a 30 degree rise. On our second test, we have a flow rate of 2 gallons per minute with 60 psi and an incoming water temperature of around 69 degrees. As you can see with these inputs, we are receiving about 40 degrees rise in temperature. Next we bring the flow rate down to a gallon per minute, still with a psi of 60 and an incoming water temperature of 68 degrees. With these inputs, we are heating the maximum set point for this unit which is 125 degrees. As you can see here, our Eco 110 unit can operate with a flow rate of as little as one half a gallon per minute. 